Hello and welcome to a Theme Park Worldwide News Update. Now it's the 5th of June 2020 and over in Florida, Universal Orlando Resort has reopened to guests. Over the past few days and in preparation for this reopening, they've done various different previews, including those for team members and also for annual pass holders as well. Now Brett has appeared in many different videos here on the channel and of course he lives over in Florida. So with him being an annual pass holder for the Universal Orlando Resort, he went down there just a couple of days ago. He took some fantastic photos that I shared on our social media at Theme Park Worldwide. Uh, so a big thank you to Brett for heading down there, taking loads of photos. And I thought I'm going to film a video and talk about um, Universal Orlando Resorts and these changes that have been made, um, both because of the pandemic and also because of the construction that's currently taking place on new projects as well. So let's get started and we'll go straight in. Before I talk about some of the social distancing measures and that sort of stuff, what you Universal have implemented. Let's talk about something that everyone's on about all over the world at the moment, and that's the brand new roller coaster uh, that is being built in Universal Islands of Adventure. Here's the first photo just here. So, like I said, a big thank you to Brett for taking all of these. He's took some fantastic shots, and of course, that's allowed me to put together this video sharing my thoughts on it all. Um, so, yes, this new roller coaster is going to be located within the Jurassic Park themed area of Islands of Adventure. Now, of course, Jurassic Park is a brand that has evolved over the years, um, Jurassic World uh, films that are now what come out um, and it's not currently known the exact theme of what this ride is going to be. We know it's going to be part of the Jurassic Park area but will it be um, Jurassic World, um, will they be retheming the whole area to Jurassic World or will they be keeping the rest of it at Jurassic Park and this will be a Jurassic World coaster. Nobody fully knows at the moment however what we do know is that construction is taking place uh, as we can see in that really nice overview. Um, just there. Also in the distance as well, um, you can make out the location of it in Islands of Adventure. It, of course, part of the coast is on the water, but you've also got um, some of the buildings of Hogsmeade over in the background there as well. So I am hoping that they put some planting in around here. Uh, I'm sure they will do, um, just to sort of block out Hogsmeade a little bit at the back there, because that's all part of the wisdom world of Harry Potter. And obviously um, you've got the, the Jurassic Coast or what's going in front of it. So let's move on to the next image. Of course, you, again, you can see Hogwarts off to the right hand side but construction taking place here um, for many many months now they've been working on the foundations they've had to drain the lake um, so it's been lower to be able to do these foundations uh, they've had to take down a lot of trees um, and yeah so much work has gone into this project already um, but just a few weeks ago support started to go in followed by track now, the coaster itself is actually manufactured by Intamin. Of course, last year, the same park actually opened another Intamin roller coaster uh, with seven launches. That's Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. So this is a second Intamin coaster. This is expected to open at some point next year in 2021. Uh, but as we can see here from this image, um, a lot of uh, track is starting to go in um, around over the water. As we move on here to this absolutely fantastic photo uh, that Brett's took, you get a really good look at how close the track's coming to each other there. Um, and on social media, a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, is this going to be a dueling coaster? Uh, it's not a dueling coaster. What this part of the ride is, is where the track will actually pass back round each other. Um, a, a bit of a helix, really, what it's going to do with these different elements throughout it. Um, but yeah, that's what you, you're looking at there. And also in this next image just here as well. So if we just look at the top of that piece of track, um, what's currently not in place there, um, that's where the train's actually going to come out in the second section of the ride. Uh, and then it's actually going to go into a bit of a stall before coming back round and up into a helix and then into what looks like a heartline roll. So um, with, with what we're looking at here, it's not a dueling coaster. It's where the track will pass back on each other um, when it comes back round in that helix. But yeah, that looks like it's going to be some sort of stall there at the top. Really like the look of that. In terms of the ride, um, with it being Intamin, we're looking at two launches what are going to make up uh, uh, this Jurassic Coaster uh, and hopefully we're going to be seeing some nice snappy launches uh, that are also heavily themed and have got a lot of things around them. 
with other Intamin Blitz coasters that are out there, um, such as Maverick or Taran, uh, both fantastic rides. It's all about the theming around them that really makes it. On Maverick, that second launch, um, what's inside the building under the station is incredible. And then of course, Taran, again, the second launch down in a pit um, is excellent with all the walls at the side. So I'm really hoping we have something similar with the Jurassic Coaster. But yeah, you look at that imagery there um, at what we've got, it looks absolutely fantastic. And like I say, that stall, I mean, coming out into quite a high G turn there, I think he's going to be incredible. Uh, also, this ride is going to feature a top hat. That's what we can see um, just here. So that's the support structure for that top hat. Um, it's going to go up into the second launch, then up into this top hat, then down where it looks like it's going to go into some sort of stall element uh, before going into that high G turn and the helix. Um, but yeah, this looks incredible. And obviously, we'll start to see track um, going on to there shortly. Uh, here we can see some other parts of the layout. This is further on land now. And with this ride, they've put a lot of foundations into the water, uh, but also quite a bit of it is on land. And they've just took out some of the trees, relocated um, some other parts just to be able to build this coaster. Um, but yeah, that black track and support is really coming together nicely now, uh, as we can see in that photo. As we move on here, we can see some more of the support structure and again, how it moves on from land um, off into the water and the big lagoon in Islands of Adventure. The support structure on the left there, that's all part um, of what's going to become uh, that top hat. And then we've got some other sections that I believe the supports on the right there are going to be towards um, that last part of the ride, um, hence why it's quite low down. But I'm loving the look of this, the fact that it's going to have two launches, uh, multiple inversions, rumoured to have five inversions in total. Um, and then you look at the overall theme, what they're going to put in with this. I think we're going to be looking at something incredible. Um, over in the background, you can just see some of the track maintenance area and the station building as well. And there's like a mysterious concrete tower there at the moment as well. Um, that is certainly looking really interesting. Uh, another little overview here then. Uh, Brett got some fantastic photos, didn't he? But um, you get a really nice overview of the site there and how it's all sort of going to fit together, both on land and on water. And again, that's really going to add to it. That heartline roll that it's going to do to towards the end of the ride um, looks like it'll be great over the water. Um, so hopefully we'll see some more theme in and elements around there that build up the atmosphere for this. But the fact that construction is really progressing well now and they've been working for many, many months now um, on this project, I do think that uh, we're going to be seeing some heavy theming around the ride as well. This is a really nice overview because it shows them lower sections off to the right, just by the rocks there. Um, of course, you can see just below Hogwarts, you've got that helix, you've got um, that, that section where it's going to come back round. Of course, you can see on the top right there as well, that stall element that's uh, going in. Uh, but then on the left, you can see, of course, what's going to be the highest part of the ride, which is that top hat that will come after the second launch. So looking at that, um, it gives you a nice idea on how uh, high it's all going to look. And we don't know the exact height of that yet but it's going to be quite high off to the left and quite low off to the right. So I imagine it'll look great. And you've got the Discovery Center. That's the big building in the middle there that you can see. Um, that's the Discovery Center that's currently existing. Uh, we don't know what, if any changes are going to come to that yet. I imagine some changes will happen to it. Um, but, you know, no matter what, you're going to be able to come out the back of that and, and see this amazing coaster. And hopefully there'll be lots of pathways and stuff to walk around and really enjoy it. Uh, and another photo here just showing you uh, that turnaround, that helix. Um, from a bit of a different angle there again um, so you can see the different elevations on the site. Um, another little close up there at some of the supports and just how low it's going to be over the lagoon in Islands of Adventure. Um, and then another photo from inside the land at the moment just opposite the River Adventure for Jurassic Park um, where you can see all of the uh, construction taking place and some sort of support structure there what looks like it could be for some rock work to me. You can just see it in the centre of the photo that isn't for the coaster structure that looks to me like it's going to be for some rock work so there we go it's all very exciting my thoughts on it are i think it's going to be an incredible ride i love the fact that it's on the water you're going to walk into arms of adventure you're going to have the hulk off to the left with that cobra roll over the water and then look straight over and see this so i think it's going to be absolutely fantastic um, but there's some other changes that have happened as well and also in the same area um, i mentioned earlier how things have been relocated for this new coaster such as the raptor 
character encounter. Look at the new entrance here. This looks really, really nice. You've got the signage at the top there. Um, as you can see, you've got all the uh, cast members out the front there that have got all the uh, face coverings on, of course. Um, but yeah, you can see all the raptor encounter. It looks very, very nicely done. Um, and, and again, that more fits with Jurassic World than Jurassic Park with the blue and silver color scheme going on. Uh, but yeah, talking of the team members, we'll move more onto that shortly as we talk more about social distancing. Um, but also in the Jurassic Park area, you can see the archway. Um, but in the background there, there's like a breeze block wall. What's that actually going to be? Um, you may be thinking that's actually going to be a new baggage area, a new locker area for Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey over in the Wizarding World. And here's a better angle at that now. So you can see um, Hogwarts up on the hill there. And just down the bottom, that's going to be a new baggage hold. Really pleased they're doing this um, because the baggage hold was an absolute state before. It was all underneath the castle. So you walk in the queue line, really nicely themed. And then you just end up in the castle and there'd be all these lockers everywhere. And it was an absolute disaster, um, full of people around. And this is before what's happened with COVID-19. Um, it was just uh, full of people in there. So it's great to see they're putting in a new locker storage area and that'll be off to the left of the land. I imagine this is going to be themed on the back to maybe fit in with Jurassic Park or we'll see some more landscaping and trees on there, maybe some rocks that blend in with the background just to make this look a bit nicer. But again, that's very, very positive news um, from Islands of Adventure. Um, let's talk about the social distancing measures then that Universal have put into place. Um, you have to have your temperature checked, you have to wear a mask, a face covering, uh, and of course to put all the markers on the floor and there's reduced capacity. So uh, looking at this, this was the queue to get in um, what Brett had to stand in in the morning. As you can see, you've got the markers there for uh, keeping two meters apart. Along with that, all the signage. Uh, and this was the queue for temperature checks, which was quite long, Brett said, but um, he did soon get through it and into the park. Um, once he was in one of the parks, this is in Universal Studios now out of the two parks that they've got. Um, you can see the please stand here uh, marker on the floor. This is in the queue line for Shrek. Um, and yeah, you can see people are, are definitely following that there. You've got that nice big gap. Looks way more than two meters, actually, that gap there. Looks more like three or four meters, um, which is great. And as you can see, you've got that couple who are waiting in front on that line. Um, Brett waited uh, behind the uh, blue line just there. Um, you've got like some of the refreshment areas such as this where you've got all the markers out on the floor. I like how Universal have made it nice and clear as well uh, about where you want to be standing and just like here at this refreshments area. And over at Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, we saw what's going on with the locker area just. We can see here social distancing taking place um, just out the front there, um, the current locker area. Like I say, you queue up all around there, you get the beautiful atmosphere looking at all the rocks and Hogsmeade up on the hillside. Um, and then you, you go in and the locker area is an absolute mess. So it's good to know they're making them changes, but um, there's a little look at that queue line and the social distancing um, taking place. Same with inside, of course, it's an indoor dark ride. Um, you've got a lot of indoor queue line as well so you can see there it's all nicely marked out very very clear how they've done it and it looks uh, permanent how they've done it in terms of you know they've not put down like just rubbish tape for it doesn't look very good they've really thought about the color scheme and the design of it and most importantly it's very clear and people are following it um, so still in Wisdom World now, over to Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. We can see there some of the um, social distancing in place um, in the outdoor queue line. Uh, it didn't look very busy at all here um, from what we can see, which is good really in the fact that, um, you know, they didn't overbook it for the annual pass days. It'll be interesting to see how today goes for them. Uh, today, the 5th of June 2020, is their actual public opening day. Uh, this was for team members and, of course, annual pass holders at these previews, what they've done. Um, so yeah, let's have a continue looking at these photos. And this is a really interesting one because this is the Hulk um, that we can see here. So normally, of course, the Hulk um, will be able to seat 32 riders per train. However, as we can see here, there's only eight riders on there. So if we have a, a closer look at this image, you can really get an idea of what's going on with the social distancing. So you can see like the party are on the front row. They've left the row behind and all the way up the train. They've left a row between them parties. But you look on row three, you've got a party there of three. If that was a party of four, I'd imagine they'd have all still been able to go on that row. So really, you know, depending on how big the parties are is how many people is going to be on the train. You look at what's happened at the back, you've got um, a lady who's on her own there. So she's had to have a whole row to herself. So there's three other seats, what could have normally had people in. So uh, it's one of those, it depends on how many 
people are in the party. But um, so really, you know, you, you could still be having a, a reasonable throughput or at least half of what would normally be on the train. But as we can see here, uh, there's only actually eight riders on there just because of how the groups have, have formed. On this day, the queue was advertised at 70 minutes for the Hulk. Um, however, some rides are running with normal queue lines where you have to wait, such as the Hulk. Others are running with a virtual queue system like Hagrid's and that's running with a virtual queue. But um, really interesting to see, of course, you know, with the group size and things, Universal being very accommodating. Uh, it means that if you are going on your own, you're still going to get a row to yourself. You, they're not going to stick one on one end and one on the other. Um, you get that row. Um, yeah, that's really how it should be, you know. So it's good to see that um, Universal have stuck with that. And I'm very impressed with what we've seen from Universal, actually, uh, in regards to all of this. I think they've done a, a very good job. Um, now, finally, and moving away from the social distance into some other changes going on, this time over in Universal Studios, Florida. Like I say, they've got two theme parks and one water park there. Uh, this is over in the other theme park. The other one we were talking about just was Islands of Adventure. Um, the Bourne Stunt Tacular, which is the new experience set to open at some point this year uh, that's if it still does open this year some parks tend to be moving things to next year but we'll see what happens but the Bourne Stuntacular uh, is a replacement to Terminator 2 uh, what was there before like a 3D show and experience that was very very good actually I enjoyed it and um, you had like the motorbike what came out and stuff and it was like a live action show uh, that was very nicely put together. We're expecting a similar sort of thing here with the Bourne Stuntacular but I must say what they've done with the facade is very very nice. Uh, it looks very modern doesn't it? Um, with all the signage. I'm really liking the, the, the big signs what you've got on either side of the entrance uh, and all the branding for it looks really really good. Of course all based on, on the Bourne series and yeah this looks like it'll be a nice addition. You can see the entrance there as well um, to the Bourne Stuntacular at the moment all the windows are blocked in but you've got some um, you know nice lights on there some nice decor a bit art deco sort of style and I think that looks like it'll be a good addition hopefully the show will be as good as Terminator 2 because I really really enjoyed that yes it was getting a bit dated I mean it was put in, in the late 90s but it's good to see that they've put a replacement in there we know the show building was extended a little bit during the construction so we could be looking at something a little bit longer a little bit more detailed um, with the Bourne Stuntacular so I look forward Forward to uh, experiencing that hopefully next time we go out there to Florida and um, the final photo what Brett took for me was of some of the merchandise here for the Bourne Stuntacular you can see some mugs uh, some different cups there uh, t-shirts and also caps as well quite sleek nice branding and um, what they've got for that and uh, yeah let's hope that the show follows on with that as well and um, but there you go that is all for this update on the Universal Orlando Resort like I say it's reopened to guests today and um, there's still over a month to go until Walt Disney World is going to be opening uh, but I'll be filming a similar video about Walt Disney World and the changes that are being ma made there uh, including the construction projects as well much like we've looked at here a bit of an overview of everything going on at the moment at Universal Orlando Resort and uh, what are your thoughts on the Jurassic Coaster and um, the social distancing taking place the Bourne Stuntacular um, let me know your thoughts down below in the video comments as always it's great to look back through what you guys think as well and I'll always read all of the comments here on Theme Park Worldwide thank you very much for joining me for another news update and once again a huge thank you to Brett over in Florida good friend of mine here at Theme Park Worldwide um, for taking all of these photos uh, which has allowed me to make this video to share with you guys that means it's time to cue those credits see you in the next update